Good evening. Welcome to St. Anthony as we gather for the fourth Sunday of Advent. We're almost here, almost to Christmas. It's great to see all of you here this evening. I would also like to special, well, especially welcome anyone who's joining us online via our live stream. In the description of the live stream, there's a link to a worship aid if you'd like to follow along with Mass this evening. Before we begin, I have a few announcements. There's still space at our Christmas Masses, but they're filling up quickly. So please sign up using Realm, and you can also see how many available spaces by visiting Realm, or you can contact the parish office for more information. The church will be open for Eucharistic Adoration this Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. December 22nd. All are welcome to attend, and no sign-ups are required to come and join us for adoration. For many of us, Christmas is going to look different, maybe even difficult this year. For some of us, Christmas is a time of mourning when we remember losses from the past. St. Anthony is not blind to this reality, and because of this, we are offering a special Mass to address these very real difficulties. Please consider joining us for a longest night Mass this coming Monday, December 21st at 7 p.m. Come to pray grieve and be transformed by a God who knows our sufferings. On New Year's Day, we celebrate the solemnity of Mary, the Mother of God. We will offer Masses on December 31st at 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. in Spanish, and on January 1st at 9 a.m., 11 a.m., and 1 p.m. in Vietnamese. Please sign up through Realm. This holiday season, please consider making a gift above and beyond your regular giving amount. Special offering that will help us continue and pursue our mission, ministries, programs here at St. Anthony. And always thank you for your generosity. And January is National Human Trafficking Awareness Month. To celebrate this, on January 4th at 6 we are hosting a virtual film screening of Not My Life, a film about human trafficking and modern slavery. Please contact Danny to learn more about this event and to register. Our presider and homilist for Mass today is Father John. And let us all take a moment to invite the Holy Spirit into our hearts as we prepare to celebrate this liturgy. Please stand.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. It's really good to see all of you here. It's good that all of you at home can join us for this celebration, this fourth Sunday in Advent. And as we gather together as a community, we look into our lives and we ask God's forgiveness for all of our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Kyrie eleison. You came to call sinners, Christ eleison. Christ You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Hear ye, May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let's all be seated now as we listen to God's word. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, Go, do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you, and I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old, since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you, and when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. generations 
hands my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness for you have said my kindness is established forever in heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness forever I will covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. Forever will I confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you, according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic writings and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ. Be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, 
Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, my brothers and sisters, we are very fortunate are going to have a couple of confirmations today. As you know, only an, a bishop can do confirmations, uh, and uh, this year has been very difficult, and we've had over 100 confirmations, and so it's been a real privilege for me to be able to participate in this sacrament, and this is the last night before my uh, dispensation goes away. So if anybody else wants to get confirmed, tonight's the night. Uh, and so, but it is a real privilege. When I call your name, I'm going to ask you to stand, okay? And just remain standing. So Kevin, are you here? Kevin Cardoza. Good, just remain standing. Kevin, who's your sponsor? Cool, okay. Um, Jesus Rodriguez Sandoval. Way to go. And who's your sponsor? Cool, okay, great. You can be seated, but you stay standing. Uh, and uh, Isidiro, I- Isidiro Sandoval. Oh, yeah, I know you. Okay, good. And you're all set? And who's your sponsor? Cool. Okay, great. And uh, Alex. Oh, Alex, finally. I've been waiting for you. So I'm so happy you're here. So let's give them a round of applause. Okay, be seated. As you can see, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Five days to go before Christmas comes. But before we get there, we celebrate this fourth Sunday of Advent. And this fourth Sunday reminds us that we must not delay. I'm not talking about last-minute shopping or decorations, but rather we must not delay in the renewal of our lives. It's a little bit easier this year because we should bunker down, right? My friends, we're called now to really reflect in these final days before Christmas. Were you ever asked to do something And you kind of begin to look puzzled. I've had a few moments in my life like this. And you respond, who, me? You might even say to the person, I'm not really qualified to take this on. You know, I I could give you a few other names that would do a much better job at this. Much better. But in the end, you do it. Because the person asking you has faith in you. 
and knows, you'll be great at it. You may not get it or understand it, but in the end, you respond, okay, I'll give it a shot. I'll take it on. Mary was in God's focus. God had God's eye on this beautiful, humble, young girl. God chose her. God saw her as the one who would be mother of the greatest gift of all. And Mary must have felt this, me? Me? Are you sure you got the right girl? We hear today, but she was greatly troubled at what was said. However, my sisters and brothers, she might not have understood, but she knew to follow God's will. Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. She said, yes. She proclaimed in a very humble way her acceptance to receive God's gift and share him with the whole world. She named him Emmanuel, Jesus. Our world today, my friends, needs more than ever your yes. Not maybe later, maybe when I'll retire, or I'm not sure, or especially no. Our community needs your yes. Mary's yes brought positive change to a world in darkness. Mary's yes changed the course of action set from the very beginning with Adam and Eve. Mary's yes gave people hope and freedom from sins. Just as God focused on Mary, Mary realized she had to focus on God above everything else. She helps all of us to realize that our lives are not about fame and fortune or about a career or being first and thinking only of oneself. As much as we might hate to admit it, the world does not have all of the answers. This lowly servant of God put trust in the reality that God has the answer for eternal life, for our salvation. To follow Mary's example then, Mary's yes, we must first listen, listen. We talk and talk and talk and talk. We even talk in our mind while someone else is talking so we know what we are going to say when the person finishes. Mary pondered what the angel's words meant. True listening calls for reflection. We cannot follow God's will in our lives if we do not listen to the voice of God. Think about how much talking we do, even in prayer. People spend their whole time in prayer just talking. Just sit and be still and listen. And after Mary listens, she accepts the request given to her. This is her yes. She pondered and then she responded with open arms and an open heart. Eventually, every one of us must truly accept Jesus in our lives. Have you as your Lord and Savior? That question is not only being asked by a person in a white shirt and a black tie knocking at 
on your door waiting to proselytize you. It is Mary asking you that question. She is inviting you, she is inviting me to make a commitment, to say yes. And we have to be careful not to shut the door on Mary. Sometimes I wonder what life would be like if Mary said no. Do you remember the movie, It's a Wonderful Life? How many saw that movie? Raise your hand. It's a Wonderful Life with James Stewart and Donna Reed. I make it a point to watch that movie every year around this time. An angel is sent from heaven to help a desperately frustrated businessman by showing him what life would have been like if he had never been born. And I personally think it's good for us to reflect on a no response from Mary. To reflect on what your life and what my life would be like today. It reminds me that Mary also had a choice. She had a free choice. Her no would have meant that we would not be here right now. Because there would be no parish church, no master builder, no Catholics, no altar, no Eucharist. Because there would be no Jesus, no gift. There would be no word became flesh and dwelt among us. There would be no Christmas. So the choice that Mary made was a good one. And my life, your life, is different because of her yes. Every yes you make, every yes I make, every yes we make, changes someone's life and eases a tension or a burden that someone is carrying and even brightens someone's day. In these last few days of Advent, let us invite Mary to lead us, to walk with us. I am convinced that if we build a strong relationship with Mary, if we remain close to her, we will know true Christmas joy. We will realize that her yes means something and that our yes is sacred and holy, and definitely important to change the world, to change the way we live, to let others know of God's love. And so today, my friends, let us see the beauty in Mary. Let us see her commitment, and let's look at our lives, and let's make this Christmas the best ever, to be reborn in Christ, who is there for us. Today we have these four uh, candidates for confirmation. Today you are saying yes. You are making a commitment. This confirmation is not a graduation from the Catholic Church. Thank God it's over. Many people see it that way. We don't see them then. Perhaps they'll drop in when they're going to get married. You know, it doesn't work that way. This is not a sacrament of maturity. It's not a graduation. It is a sacrament of initiation into the fullness of the Catholic Church. And it is your commitment to grow in this church, to grow in your relationship with Christ, to grow in the gifts that you will be given today. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. And I ask you to pray for us that we may be examples of what it means to be people of yes, yes to God's love.
And now I'm going to ask the four uh, individuals who are going to be confirmed to please stand. And so now, when you were little babies, when you were baptized, you were given these questions. You were asked these questions that I'm going to ask you right now. And they were given to you, however you were so young and little that your parents and godparents responded on your behalf. Today, you respond to the answer, to answer these questions. And I'm going to ask everyone else to join them also in their response. And I need to hear it, even though you're wearing a mask. Look how loud I am. See, you can still hear me. So I'm going to ask you these questions, nice and loud. Do you renounce Satan and all his empty works and all of his empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today, through the sacrament of confirmation, is given to you in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost? Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So now I'm going to ask the four of you to keep your mask on at all times. I'm going to ask you to come forward here now and stand in a line here, physical distancing, facing everyone, okay? So come forward. And at this time, the sponsors, if you can just stand in your place. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, for these his adopted sons, already born again to eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts and through his anointing conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these, your servants, to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin, send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety, Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord. Kevin, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Alex, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. You should be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Isidro, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you.
Let's give them now a round of applause. So, uh, Kevin, Jesus, Isidiro, Alex, congratulations. And your life now continues to grow in the faith. And we will be contacting you to get you involved, you know, right away. And uh, we're so happy for all of you. And we're so excited that when you get the call, hey, we need you for this, you're going to say, oh, I can't wait to be there, okay? I want to hear that when you go. So thank you so very much. You can return now to your place. And before you leave today, uh, make sure I got each of you a, a rosary and a prayer shawl that is a gift for all of you um, that you can take with you, uh, put together by the people of our parish. So let's all be seated now as we continue our celebration. No, let's all stand. <laughs> Catholic calisthenics. Let's just take a moment now and turn to our God with all of our petitions. In today's Gospel, we read how Mary reacted to the angel's message that God had chosen an important role for her in her young life. When she said, Be it done to me according to thy word, we pray that we too be blessed with the grace to accept God's will when faced with challenges, troubles, and setbacks in our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for all expectant mothers and for those in childbirth, that they may receive the best in medical care, and that they and their babies may enjoy your protection from all harm during this most blessed moment of pro procreation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the unborn. We pray, Lord, that you may have given us life and intend it forever, enlightening our minds to an awesome and renewed conviction that all human life is sacred because it is created in your image and likeness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we look forward to the joys of Christmas, our hearts are with all families who have recently lost loved ones, we pray that Christ promise that they are in the loving care of the Father who created them in a, in a consolation to them at this time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the poor, the homeless, and the lonely for whom this time of year brings anxiety rather than happiness that they may benefit from the kindness and generosity of others, and that the peace of Christ may be theirs and their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As the world continues to suffer from this horrible pandemic, we pray for a peaceful and safe Christmas, and that there is a sharing of the great love which the Father showed for all peoples, with the birth of his son Jesus made man. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We bow our heads and remember in silence our own personal intentions and the intentions of those who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, and we pray for the poor who have been confirmed today that the Lord bless them, that they open their heart to the power of the Spirit and lead strong, holy, dynamic Christian lives. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, our Father, we glorify your name. We turn our lives totally and completely over to you. Help us to really be strong in our yes. Help us to to really hear Mary's yes and to know how her yes changed our lives forever. 
her yes brought forth the most beautiful gift that God has ever given us. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's all be seated. and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn 
of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again, until Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Alexander, our Bishop, Peter, our Auxiliary Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. For Holy Communion today, I want to remind everyone that you must keep your mask on at all times when you come forward. When I say the body of Christ, please say amen while wearing your mask. Only hold your hands like this to receive the body of Christ. This is the proper way. No grabbing, no other form of receiving Christ. So you receive him like this. If you receive on the tongue, however, you can come forward and you'll say amen. Lift up your own mask, extend your tongue as far as possible, and I will place the body of Christ on your tongue. I'm also asking that uh, we're, we're not rushing, so please have physical distancing, respect each other as you come down the aisle. I'll first bring communion over there to the side and to you, and then uh, please come forward um,
For those not able to join us in person, I invite you to make an act of spiritual communion as we pray. I ask Jesus to remain spiritually in my heart. I embrace him and I love him for being there with me at all times. I am united with Jesus completely, and this prayer affirms his love just as if I were receiving the Eucharist. Amen.
Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever near, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Once again, I want to congratulate the four who have been confirmed. I am really proud of each and every one of you. Just to run by you a couple things. So as a church now, we no longer have to contact Trace. So that uh, is something that's effective this weekend. However, I want to make it clear that we still sign up for masses. So you must all sign up through Realm, uh, and we are only limited to 100 people. So please be aware of that. Um, and also physical distancing within the church. All of our pews are marked. And just for a test for all of you, uh, as you leave today, if you're sitting in a pew and there's no X in that pew, that means you're in the wrong pew. And that's really important because everything is measured out accordingly. And if you're a family of three or more and there is someone else sitting in your pew, then you are too many in that pew. Only families together. And this is very strict in terms of how we set this up. So I want to just remind us all uh, of that. And so there are also chairs on the side and everything. I want to call your attention to our new cameras in church that will be functioning after the uh, new year. And those cameras are going to be permanent fixtures. And I'm very excited about that. So we will always be able to have mass online for the homebound, for people who are sick as we move into the future. And so uh, we still have a lot of work to do with computers and everything to set it all up. And so it will not be formally ready until after Christmas. And so we'll be dealing with our iPhones, uh, taking turns with them. If you're scheduled for a Mass on Christmas Day, uh, that's great. And so, but all of our Masses, on all of the Mass times that we have in church, will all be online. So every single one of them, so you can watch at the same time at home, uh, and the first one beginning at 4 o'clock here. All the masses are uh, pretty filled, and I'm really uh, very inspired by that. Um, and there is no walk-ins unless there are extra spaces. So please be aware of that uh, in preparation. One last thing, everyone when you leave, there are bulletins here on the table, in the foyer there, and calendars, please take one. Everyone must leave outside this door. No other doors should you go out of. Everyone out through this door. And um, uh, I think that's it, right? Do we got it all? Good. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go forth proclaiming the gospel of the Lord by your life.
Gracias, Dios.